the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. And up to the nine foot homemade oak bar. Pour yourself a cold one. My name is Chris Lanuti. I'm your neighbor. I'm sitting in my basement and I'm doing 30 minutes of good. That is the EP podcast. A lot ahead on the show today. Multiple guests down here at the nine foot homemade oak bar and the mayor joining me as well. It's all brought to you by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park, dedicated to supporting our area with great banking tools and friendly service. A true community bank providing this neighborhood with customized financial solutions like total access checking. That's an account with free ATMs nationwide. That means you use an ATM anywhere. They're going to put the money back in that that ATM charges you. That makes it free. Plus, when you open up a total access checking account today, you get a $300 bonus. Open online at bankevergreenpark.com slash total access slash EP. $100 $100 required to open, requirements to qualify, must use link to apply, member FDIC. Joining me on the phone line real quick on the EP podcast, uh, I wanted to get her on because this was a vision of hers. This was an idea that she had. I talked with a couple of people in the village and they're like, no, Mayor Kelly Burke is behind this thing going on at Klein Park on Thursday the 11th. She had an idea, and she ran with it. The mayor joins us right now. How are you, Mayor? I'm great, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Oh, well, thanks for jumping on. So on the 11th, you're doing a picnic in the park at Klein Park, uh, or Circle Park, depending on what people call it. It's right up the street from my place, so I find it highly convenient. I can't wait. A mixture of food trucks, from what I can see here. Some food's going to be out there, a DJ. Tell me what the original plan was, how this came together. Well, as you know, um, we did uh, a community survey several months ago, and uh, we were looking for um, feedback on different stores and, uh, you know, retail that people wanted. But one of the things that came up as a part of that was people were suggesting they wanted to, you know, try more of a festival type atmosphere, you know, some different type of concerts in the park, things like that. So we put our heads together and um, thought, let's Let's just start small. We'll try something real casual on a Thursday night at Circle Park. And um, if it's successful, we can build on it for next year. We're calling it Picnic in the Park. We have um, a DJ uh, from Beverly Records, John Dresness. He spins vinyl. And uh, I've seen him at uh, Nikki's in Beverly, and he's real entertaining, Real, just a wide variety of music. It'll be real low-key. People can bring their um, blankets, uh, you know, bring their kids, bring their chairs, and just kind of hang out. But it'll be at, we'll uh, close off the street between the, the community center and the uh, park. Kids can use the playground. We're going to have some uh, bean bags out there. We're going to have a, a campfire and s'mores. We're going to have Paracos Pizza, Rojo Verde, Nikki V's. And Marrakesh Coffee Roasters, they do iced coffees and lemonades. And we'll have our youth department with pop water, frozen treats, and uh, there will be a bar. And o- o- open out is supposed to be there at the bar as well. I, I know. I was sitting with John when when he was exchanging a text with you, and he's like, I think I'm going to this thing. I'm like, cool. It'll be fun because it seems like a really neat idea. And I also noticed online, and I, I even fell into it myself, people saw the listing that there would be a couple of food trucks there. They got excited. They were. Uh, I think that's like the new thing. People like street food. They like, they like those little options. They like to be able to go from one place to another and try different things. And I think people got excited excited when they saw that as part of this picnic in the park. Uh, what is it like trying to gather those trucks? Because I think people kind of assume that like, oh, you just call them up and the truck just shows up. It's super complicated and it's harder than we thought. Even just getting some of the food trucks to call us back <laughs> was difficult. And some of the ones, you know, that are real, that are popular for a good reason, um, they wanted us to guarantee a certain amount of sales before they would come and that, you know, we can't do that. We, we, this is our first event. We don't know how many folks are going to be there. So, you know, so we're starting it this way and let's see how it goes. And then we can build on it next year. You know, having gone through the experience of trying to recruit the food trucks, we know a lot more than we did uh, a month or so ago. And so we can, we can build on it and, 
if it's successful, we can make it uh, bigger and better. But it's going to be a real, real kind of chill evening. Um, it's volleyball, sand volleyball playoff on that night as well. So the park should be, um, you know, have a lot of activity anyway. So this will just complement it. Yeah, it's a lively park, especially on uh, some of the weeknights there. A uh, really good crowd comes out there. Like I said, I'm right up the street from it. I go for a walk with the dog. I walk by, and that that is a one of your parks that has an awful lot of folks that, that mill about in it and use it. And I've heard that one of those things that you want to see happen as mayor is people utilizing the parks more. Is that true? Why is that? Well, they're, they're an awesome resource, and we have um, you know parks that are – really heavily used and then we have ones that are less heavily used so you know we want to get more people out everywhere but especially some of our uh more i don't know hidden hidden gems i guess you could say yeah, exactly. It's kind of fun. I think we might have to start just exploring all of them here on the show because I, I hear them get brought up every once in a while and I'm like, we have another one? Right, right. I didn't even know that was there. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, yesterday we we just uh did a ribbon cutting for um a Gaga pit at Duffy Park, which is very much for the young people. Um, but it's a kind of a version of dodgeball with walls. So that was an improvement we made to Duffy Park, which is just great. I mean, a lot of kids use Duffy for football and soccer and baseball. And, you know, this is a nice compliment for the playground that they have there too. So we're trying to make improvements in all our parks. All right, let's talk real quick before I let you go. Uh, you were on the show recently within about a month or so, and uh, you sat down and talked about this development, the townhome project. I know you had a meeting going on. I know that, uh, you know, people had concerns. You were addressing them. Did that end up getting rezoned? Is that going ahead? Was that sold? Is it moving forward? So it, the, the rezoning passed. That's correct. Um, the sale has not, uh, yet closed, but we anticipate it near the end of the month, beginning of uh, September. Mayor Kelly Burke is nice enough to jump on this show, uh, talk about whatever we ask her, and uh, plan a really nice event. It is coming up Thursday, the 11th. It's in Klein Park, Circle Park, if you like to call it that. Should be a really fun night out there. Some music, some food, some activities. Bring the family, bring your blankets, bring the, bring your chairs on what should be a very nice evening in Evergreen Park. Thank you so much, Mayor, for jumping on. You're welcome. Bring your appetites and uh, stop by the bar where the trustees and uh, Clerk Aparo and I will be guest bartenders. Sounds like a good event coming up here on Thursday, and the talk of the food trucks made me hungry. If you're hungry this week, remember the absolute best and authentic Mexican-American food you can find is just outside of Evergreen Park at Americano's Restaurant, 111th and Western. We were just recently there. Listen to the episode on demand. Hear from the owner, AJ Castillo, and why he opened up Americano's. Plus, you'll hear me trying out some of the gourmet tacos that they make there. They got steak. They got brisket, too, though. Fish, shrimp, chorizo, and sweet potato, the famous pork belly, and so many more. Big, beautiful bar in there. Extensive selection of tequilas, whiskeys, beers, and wines, and that Cadillac margarita, all premium, fresh, squeezed ingredients. Get in there for lunch, date night. Bring the whole family anytime I bring my group in there. And remember, if you're having a party, they have catering options as well. See more at americanosrestaurant.com or visit them today, 11060 Southwestern Avenue. Frank Murray from the Evergreen Park Library is down here with me. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good, Chris. Thanks for having me on. We finally played each other in softball. You were much better than me uh, the other night. We did play. I don't know yeah. if I was much better than you. You were much better than me. I was 0 for 3, Frank. Your, t- your team won, Chris. That's yeah, all that matters. I, I know, but I was terrible. Okay. Just awful, just atrocious, just <laughs> bad. And then afterwards, I'm sitting around and I get a phone call. We had police action here at the house last Whoa. night. Whoa. Yeah. Little Evergreen Park police action here at the police uh, action. at the house. Yeah. My, my daughter's sitting on the porch. She's doing a good job. She's following her father's rules of some boy stops by. He doesn't come in the house when I'm not there. So she's got this 16-year-old boy sitting on the porch with her having a conversation, and she's sitting out there, and the other two are inside the house. And I guess I got I got pieces of the story. You know, I ask around. You know, I worked as a dispatcher for 10 years. I, I know I know what questions to ask to figure uh-huh. things out. 
But this guy, I guess, had had an incident someplace and was hiding from the police. They were looking for him. Oh. Okay. Uh-huh. They they spot him just as he's standing at the base of my porch trying to ask my daughter if she can hide him from the police. Oh, wow. How no about joke. That? Yeah. Can I hang out here because the police are looking yeah, for me? That's sure. Okay? Come on in. According <laughs> to my daughter, this guy's <laughs> whacked out of his mind. And try and she's and she the the police officer told me as I rolled up I was like here's our guy because he saw my 16 year old with her hand out saying get off my porch <laughs> so they rolled up Evergreen Park Police on the scene and I want to say thank you to all of them there we okay? go okay every single one of them that responded I wasn't there I was playing 16 inch softball and had left the house uh, in the in the care of my 16 year old you guys did a wonderful job and the follow up call afterwards I really appreciate it as well you know you, let, let's say good things about the police when when it works right something was going on they went to go look for somebody and they got him before he was able to do something else and that's Amen. huge there we go huge stuff there do go, uh, they do a great job they're they awesome. do a great job they're awesome they're awesome okay and uh you're awesome because you got something going on at the evergreen park public library like every day every day and we and really I, do and i wanted to say that one of the coolest things that i've noticed is my wife and my daughter and my little guy are checking out books and i see you put something on the book that says you save this much money by using your library. Like you put down what the value of the book is. If you would have bought this book, it would have cost you 30 bucks. You save that by using the library. What a great idea. You know what? It's all my idea too, Chris. I'm going to take full credit. <laughs> no, there's uh, it's actually through our consortium that we participate in Swan. They came up, they have that idea. Um, and they're actually borrowing it from ALA. If anybody's interested, American Library Association has a cal- uh, calculator that you can go on their website and so say not only books, but DVDs, whatever you check out, plus any of the programs that you attend at the library, it calculates out what you save through your, through uh, what the library, your public library took care of you with. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. dude. I mean, seriously, I told my, I, and you know what it does? It makes me say, go use the library more. Like when they're like, I got to get this. No, you don't. Library's got it. Get up to the library. You see how much money I'm saving at the library? We got Frank you. Murray's got that written right <laughs> on the book. <laughs> we got you covered. What do you got coming up that's big? I know you were talking to my boy, John Brand. Yes. An open outcry recently. Yes. So you must have some kind of plan. Is that this month or is that coming up that's, way in the future? That's coming up in the future here. All right. But sa- Saturday, October 1st. I'll give a little plug for it, though. Saturday, October 1st from nine, 5 to 9 p.m., we're having a fundraising event at the library uh, called Micro Marathon in the spirit of uh, the Chicago Marathon, which is going to be going on around that time. And just to get out and enjoy and have a good time and uh, help fund the library. We're going to be having this event. Open Outcry is going to be having a couple kegs there. Aris Cider Company okay. is also going to be there. We also have donations from Revolution and Lagunitas. So, oh, yeah, fun time. We're going to have uh, uh, Joe's Red Hots, too, is going to be su- uh, supplying food. Um, and we're also going to have a, b- a band out there as well. All right, well, well so. I just marked down October 1st. There you go. You October got me 1st. to the library. Tickets go on sale to uh, August 15th, so you can stop in at the library to purchase your tickets right. ahead of time. All right, just put some off to the side for me. There I'm a go. busy man. There I run go. a podcast, okay? We'll get you. I mean, I, come on. Come <laughs> I on, run Frank. a podcast. Hook, hook a guy up, okay? Hey, hook next time, you know, have your kids stop in and purchase the tickets. All right, I'll send them up there. All right, just just put them off put them off to the side for the very busy podcast. There we go. What do we got coming up here soon in the month of August? So in the month of August, we got a bunch of a bunch of things going on. Uh, two events I want to highlight for our teens that are looking for something to do here before school starts. We've got Art in the Park. That is Thursday, August 11th at 3 p.m. It's going to be at Duffy Park. We kind of rotate every month. We go to a different park. But this one is going to be Sharpie Art on mugs. We're going to be supplying some mugs and some okay. Sharpies. You get to have some fun. Color the mugs. You can really enjoy the parks then because you got the mayor's event that she put together with the picnic in the park at Klein yep. that day later on. And you've got that beforehand over at Duffy. Like make right. it a day in the a parks here the in parks. Evergreen Park. In Evergreen yeah. Park is right. Um, and then this one I'm pretty excited about because this just kind of brings back my uh, my inner kid in this. But we're having an after hours Nerf war. On Friday, August twelfth. Are you at telling 5 me Nerf PM. guns inside? Nerf the guns library? inside the What's library. What's the age limit on this? It's it's for teens. Oh, so, man, and you're we'll, no fun. We'll let the, I know. You're man, no fun. We could do an adult one after hours. <laughs> yeah, I want to do an adult yeah. Nerf war in the library. I would cool. come to that. Hide it behind the stack. Seriously, yeah. like that's one of you got to get donations from one of these breweries and do that <laughs> one do night. That, Just yes. adults with beer and Nerf guns. Some laser tag. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine the morning crew showing up and you just stand there going, I don't know, it got a little out of hand. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain what happened to the library. There's darts all over the place. 
Little book nerf forts balls. all over the place. Oh, yeah, my gosh. <laughs> it would have been a bad scene. Another idea for the idea box there, Chris. I yeah, love it. Yeah, put it in it. there. Frank Murray down here joining us from the Evergreen Park Public Library. We're going to talk a little bit more here. Plus, we have another segment coming up. Fundraiser coming to the Evergreen Park area. Our two guests, first time on this program. Quick reminder, though, if you or a loved one having a hard time getting around the house or let's just say you need medical equipment. Evergreen Park residents in the surrounding area, very lucky to have Hyatt Home Medical Equipment right along 95th Street with that big brand new showroom. They've been here a while, but they have upgraded recently. You need a CPAP machine for the sleep apnea? You want to test it out? They have them and they have the rooms for you to try out the equipment before you go home. If you need oxygen tanks, specialized recliners or beds, aids for the bathroom so nobody slips and falls, or a retrofit to the bathtub, a ramp going into the house, a chairlift system for the first to second floor. All of that and more available at Hyatt Home Medical Equipment. They will work with your insurance to get you the best deal possible. Plus, they offer a discount to those that mention the EP podcast. Check out all they have to offer at hhme.com, 3518 West 95th Street. You have more on that piece of paper, though, my friend. What's next? For those interested in art, we've got an intro to calligraphy class on Saturday, August 13th at 10 a.m. There is a $3 registration fee, but you get a kit. You get some paper and pen that goes along with it. So you're leaving. Is that just the fancy writing? Is that what that is? Yeah, it's really fancy fancy writing. writing. All right. Something that I cannot do. I am chicken scratch (laughs) all the way. And then we also have uh, Chef Kate. Our local chef, Kate, EP resident, is going to be talking to us about um, charcuterie boards. And that's going to be Monday, August 22nd at 6.30. Is she going to talk about what a scam they are? Come on. It's just basically a big piece of wood with, like, meats and cheeses. Exactly. My my old grandfather used to do that while he was sitting around watching a ball game. He'd get out a salami. He'd get out some cheese. Mm -hmm. He'd cut up a pepper. He'd bring out a bottle of wine. And he'd sit there in in his sleeveless T-shirt on a a 90-degree day and watch watch a baseball game on TV. And I'd sit next to him. now, Now they're fancy. What he was doing is worth like $40 at a restaurant now. It's crazy to me. So she's going to show you all about that, all the different ways to <laughs> cut your meats and cheese. My big joke was right. coming on and say, to cut the cheese. Oh, look at but that. Um, you had a whole month to get that joke I did, and I got show. it, and I Excellent. delivered it. Excellent. Um, but no, Chef Kate is awesome, and she's going to show you. And the presentation, the layout, the the delivery, you right. know, she's going to show you all that. That's what makes it more expensive mm-hmm. in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. The delivery. Right, the delivery. And the, 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 and the layout. The presentation. Otherwise, it's just your grandfather's salami and cheese. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> and then our last our last big event that we have going on in August, um, before we get geared up for the fall, we've got an after-hours event. I think the last time I was on, I gave a plug for it, but it got the date got rescheduled. Okay. Um, it's going to be Friday, August 19th. We're having um, local musician John Quinn in the house. He's going to be doors open at 6, performance starts at 6.30. He grew up in EP, and he's a member of the South City Revival and Over the Side Band. All We're right. really excited to you have him. You said it was him. an after hour, so is it just the show? Or are there like refreshments? What, yeah. How does yeah, it Yeah, we'll have up? refreshments. We'll have yeah. some, uh, we'll have some uh, wine and some cheese. Ooh. Maybe we'll do the Maybe one of those charcuterie, charcuterie boards. boards whatever, yeah. whatever the heck they're called. Charcuterie boards, yeah. <laughs> Chef Kate will help us make the presentation yeah. excellent. Piece of wood with meat on it. Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> and some wine. There and we some go. Wine. Right, right. Um, but he's extremely talented. We're excited to have him. I'm telling you, Grandpa was doing that in the late '80s, early '90s. He was, he was doing a, that. He was on Think something. Think of the money he could have made if he would have figured out how to make it look fancy. We're having a Steam Fest, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics Fest on Saturday, September 17th, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We're going to have all sorts of different uh, groups and organizations there showing off all the different uh, STEAM activities. And I want to give a special shout out to all the people who participated in our summer reading program. It wrapped up at the end of July, but we had over uh, four, 540 people participate. My kids were in it. That's awesome. They're part of that number. That's great. Uh, so are my kids and myself. But everybody together combined to read over 355,000 minutes in the month in the summer months of June and July. So and hats do you off. buy all of those numbers? Do I buy all yeah, those? Yeah, do you numbers? buy all those numbers? Yes. Really? Yeah. You're sure. I'm one hundred percent. When positive. they used to hand out the thing at school like get like a free ticket to Great America if you read like a hundred yeah. hours. And I was only up to like forty 
You know how tempting it is just oh, fill in the other 60 hours? You're, you know how so easy saying, it is to just fill in the other 60 wow, hours and get so your free saying, ticket to Great America? All those great residents in Evergreen Park are lying about just, what they read. It's very easy oh, to say, man. you know what, I'll make it up in a couple of months, but let me just squeeze this in so I get the prize. That's all I'm saying, Frank. All right, guys. You're just, a very trusted hey, person. Call up Chris right now. <laughs> Start harassing him saying, how dare you? You can, actually, you. you can actually leave a message if if I'm if I'm wrong, <laughs> if you think I'm wrong, you go to the eppodcast.com, you click on the little microphone, you can leave me a voice message. But you know what I would really like to hear from? I'd like to hear from somebody who's willing to admit, you don't have to give out your last name, <laughs> that you forged and you you inflated your numbers and Frank was fooled. I, I would like that even more. I don't think that person exists. <laughs> It is now time for your EP Podcast Bulletin Board, brought to you by Cool Clouds Vapor Shop. Quitting smoking is hard. Cool Clouds wants to offer you an alternative. They have the full taste of bar inside, plus great CBD products. Check them out online at coolcloudsvapor.com or stop in 3837 West 95th Street, right here in Evergreen Park. I'm all signed up, I'm ready to go, and we will be out there in force Saturday, September the 10th, the 10th annual Most Holy Redeemer Men's Club Barbecue Bash. All you can eat, barbecue rib fest. This is one of the biggest parties in the area every year. This year, the musical guest that's headlining is then again. And I will be once again entered into this competition 10th times the charm. Get more details at mhrmensclub.com. If you want to get out and see the EP podcast sooner, we're going to be at the American Legion this coming Saturday, August the 13th. Show me your ride celebration, their second annual car cruise. The fun begins at 2 p.m. at 9701 South Kedzie Avenue. They got a bounce house, a split the pot, raffle baskets, popcorn and snow cones for the kids. Of course, they're grilling out and serving beers and live music, plus all of these super cool cars. This Saturday the 13th, it kicks off at 2 p.m. with the EP podcast on site. Meanwhile, if you or a loved one are recovering at home from an illness or hospitalization, suffering from dementia, living with a chronic health condition, terminally ill, or a fall risk, Mary Murphy and Hibernian Home Care Service wants to help. 25 years experience as a registered nurse. I just saw Mary out at the Evergreen Park Chamber of Commerce golf event this past Friday. She has a highly trained, very caring staff, and they're here for you. Check out all they have to offer at HibernianHomeCareService.com or give Mary a call 708-634-2450. Grandparents and grandkids getting together for an ice cream social. All are invited this Wednesday, August the 10th, 2 p.m. until 4 p.m. at the Community Center, 3450 West 97th Street. It is a back-to-school party hosted by the EP Office of Citizen Services, the Rec Department, and the Youth Department. They're all together on this. Refreshments, games, entertainment. You want more info, 708-422-8776. I have a giant box of Sid sauce dropped off at my door, and every time I open up a new flavor, I am amazed at what this couple has done. An Evergreen Park couple who is locally sourcing a food product. Like they're growing the peppers, they're making the sauces, they're bottling it, they're delivering it. Actually, free delivery to your door in Evergreen Park or a five-mile area around it. Check out all they have to offer and try out some of these incredible hot sauces. Brand new website, SidSauce.net. All right, sitting down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar. I got Bob Dugan. I got Dean Reedy. Uh, I've known Bob for a long time. Uh, We went to Brother Ice with each other. He was cool. He played football. I played the saxophone. We were kind of on different planes of existence, I would say. But always a really nice guy. Uh, Dean, I know because my little guy is friends with your little guy. So we've got a lot of connections down here. But this is your first time down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar. What do you you think so far? It's awesome. Thanks for having us. I'm glad that you guys are here. Uh, You're doing something to raise money over at Most Holy Redeemer, one of the many schools here in Evergreen Park that I've had a child in. I have one in there right now. Uh, But tell me a little bit about what this is. Essentially, we created what's called the MHR School Foundation, and it's a 501c3 not-for-profit organization that we created to help support the school 
on a number of different levels. Essentially, a group of parents that came out of a state of the school meeting a few years back. Uh, we saw you know, where the school was at financially, knew we had to um, take some action, be proactive in terms of um, increasing the fundraising efforts. And uh, this seemed to make the most sense. So we started uh, essentially the MHR School Foundation. So I'll ask a question that I'm sure half the people listening right now to the EP podcast have in their head, especially if they've never had a kid in, in a private school. They're going to sit there and say, wait a minute, you people pay tuition, right? You pay tuition. You got the archdiocese around you. Why do you need to do additional fundraising? I mean, aren't I going to go to your barbecue bash and your carnival and everything else like that? Like where where does the need come for this uh, this extra fundraising? Well, you know, just from a, a budgetary standpoint, um, the school, uh, especially uh, Principal Dan Turney, um, are always looking for, for ways to help improve uh, not only the technology in the school, but obviously support the administration, the faculty. Um, and so from a budget standpoint, there uh, seemed to be for a number of years a shortfall in which the church then helped um, you know, uh, support that. Because it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. Because I've, I've talked with Father Highland, who's in charge over there, and I understand how, kind of how the budgeting works. I remember during the pandemic, I learned a ton about it because I knew what was going on over at Martyrs and what was going on over at Redeemer because we were helping out here with doing their church services online through the podcast feed. And it was a thing of, oh my goodness, we don't have people now that are contributing. We still have to pay the bills. So I got a really good idea of what they used to make and what they were currently making when they couldn't get people inside of the building and that they still had these bills. And in reality, the school and the church, you know, one of them might have more than the other one. One of them might fall short. So the other one kind of covers for it. So what you're saying is, we don't want to see that that happen continuously. We want to make sure that we have enough that we don't run into a problem. Correct. Yeah, I mean, it's really a win-win. I mean, when, when we're able to get the school in a position uh, where it, it supports the budget or we're, we're uh, you know, at a break-even point, let's call it, then it's less that the church has to bring over, which obviously only benefits the, the church. So um, it's, like I said, it's, it's really a win-win for not only just the school and the school families, but also the parish uh, in the community, um, the parish community. So do you guys, does that, is that where the Raider races thing come from? I, I've seen yes. that online. Yeah. You do a thing where you basically have a computerized horse race. Is, is that exactly what it is? Correct. People bid, they put it on it. Then there's an actual video showing this, this automated race. And if your horse comes in, you win the prize, but it's a fundraising thing that you guys run through Facebook, right? A hundred percent. Yep. And, uh, through Facebook live. Um, and so Eileen Knightley, one of our board members started um, that fundraiser, and it's been hugely successful for us. In fact, um, it's, it's been able to allow us to help support uh, a, a very large project that's going on at the school right now, which is the roof project. Um, so we've been able to raise... Schools need roofs. Yeah. That, that, yep. That's something I've read overdue. before. I've read that before, that schools need roofs. It, it, really, <laughs> it really gets in the way of the learning experience if there is no roof, especially here in Chicago where you get some weather from time to time. All right, so so 80 years... Apparently families expect a roof on the, on the school when... <laughs> yeah. uh, These people. They're high maintenance. Like, back in my day, nobody <laughs> expected a roof. Now everybody wants one. Kids these days. <laughs> so, so 80 years with uh, Redeemer, I want to say, as a yes. parish. I remember the 75th anniversary like it was yesterday. And now I'm hearing that we're at we're at 80 years here for that parish. And so you guys are having an event coming up, I want to say, is it September, Bob, that you're going to be doing this? It's it, Tell me a little bit uh, about it and and what this fundraising drive has to do with the, the 80th anniversary. Yeah, so September 7th is the day. It's a 24-hour event. Um, it's a day of giving. And uh, we are going, you know, the theme is 80 years, and we're trying to raise $80,000 for the 80th anniversary Okay. and for 80 more to come. So um, we're hoping this is the first uh, of a longtime tradition of a day of giving here for Holy Redeemer so that uh, like like the um, everything else we can pass down to other generations, the younger community and the younger parishioners to continue this as we move on. So that's that's the the event. The ultimate end goal is eighty thousand dollars in one day. When you guys came up with this, was there a sense of urgency because of what happened over the last couple of years? I mean, you see Bernadette basically slowly but surely kind of disappear in Evergreen. And I feel bad for the folks that are over there, but now you see that it's consolidating with martyrs and you see the downturn in the amount of kids that are in martyrs. And you see some of these schools that used to be, there were three strong Catholic schools in Evergreen Park. And you've seen it kind of be a little bit tougher 
on the other two parishes, especially Bernadette, that are nearby you here in the EP. Is that one of the motivations that kind of got you guys going? Absolutely. We, as a group, do have contact with the Archdiocese downtown. Um, we are unfortunately seeing some of these schools, some of these churches um, being closed. And, you know, it's anecdotal, but uh, oftentimes the, the neighborhood is affected by that as well. So people leave to go to other schools or go to other parishes. Short term, we want you know those doors to stay open um, here at Most Holy Redeemer and long term, obviously, for generations to come. I mean, you can see, like you said, with in today's environment, um, it's uh, it's expensive to send your your children to uh, Catholic education. It. This bar should be a lot a lot bigger. <laughs> it should be a lot bigger. That explains the Rolling Rock. You should be drink, <laughs> you should be drinking Amstel. Drinking Rolling Rocks out of the bottle down here. Okay, all the fancy beer is gone. I can't afford that. That's what this fundraising is all about. So you get fancier beer, That's right? right? That's right. <laughs> all right. So so where do people learn more about? Uh, the day of giving, if they want to be involved in it, or if they want to give, I know you came on because you you realize there's a there's an amount of people listening to the EP podcast. Not all of them have somebody over at Most Holy Redeemer, but you're you're trying to get the word out to your parish. Where where do they go? So you you can uh, do two things. You can visit um, or go to two different websites. I should say you can go to mhrfoundation.com. Okay. Um, for the day of giving, you're actually going to go to givemhr.com, and that page is dedicated to the day of giving. Right, and so. Um, in addition to, you know, any sort of donations that you're going to be able to thankfully provide for us or offer, there's going to be different increments or different levels that when you do make a donation, you're going to be eligible for a different piece of gear um, that's actually being provided MHR for. Gear. Yep, MHR gear. Um, and uh, it's going to be provided for by a company called Lemonade. Nikki Harrington and Morgan Winters um, are part of our committee here for the, the uh, Day of Giving. And so they've created some gear that, like I said, when you donate at a certain level, you're going to get, let's say, a quarter zip. Uh, other levels, you're going to get maybe a T-shirt or a, a long sleeve T-shirt, uh, things along that koozie. Um, so you're going to be... You're getting you know, some swag. Absolutely. You're telling me you right. give some money, you absolutely. get some swag. Absolutely. That's, that's, you know, it's the South Side It's the way. name of the game. It's how the whole thing works. That's right. Um, well, we're expecting this podcast to reach nationwide. Uh, <laughs> Global, really. Oh, you, global. Your global. expectations might be a little bit higher than they should be on this Well, we're one, hoping it does have uh, a little further reach. So locally, we are going to have some lawn signs up, right. um, which are going to have QR, yep. codes. QR codes. So yep. you can, got to have, you got to have the QR code. Got to have the QR code these days. So if you're out walking your dog and you feel like giving at that point in time, we'll definitely uh, encourage people to do that. Dog decides to, you know, yeah, just that's do, a great do his business right next to the sign. Do some business. Your hope is that they'll saying. pull out their cell phone and rather than watch the dog do that they'll scan the code and give right there in the middle of the street that's what absolutely, you're going for absolutely as a so, marketing genius so that locally you're gonna you're gonna reach our uh, parishioners and our alumni uh, globally like we said all right so that'll be good we'll have uh, lots of presence on social media we're on facebook yep we're on instagram facebook. uh twitter yep. look at this and i believe linkedin look at this facebook linkedin twitter roofs it's amazing what you guys are doing. Excellent job. Hero's a strong word, Chris, but uh, we'll accept it for today. We're just doing God's work here. Another show is wrapped up. Another show's in the books. Another show is wrapped up. And then by the looks, it's going to be a good one. And we'll see you next week. And the nude is there. Another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, and it's in the books. Another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, and by the looks, it's gonna be a good one. Nudie's Basement, broadcast, Basement, the Nudie's Basement, the Broad Basement. Launcher. The EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com.